So is dead heading enough? Simply removing the head of the rose will help the plant save resources so it doesn't go to seed and instead hopefully pushes out some new growth and hopefully some more blooms. So in my opinion, deadheading is not enough in order to stimulate and encourage this massive return of blooms month after month throughout the entire year as we've been enjoying right here on our property. And I'm gonna explain to you why right now. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of pruning your roses. The general goal in this lesson is that you're creating a structure that is going to have a strong foundation, good elaborate root system that supports a lighter plant, which will encourage vigorous growth and maximum blooms. So here we are next to one of our unpruned roses. And as you can see, the structure of the plant is several feet tall. And we're gonna imagine that the root system and the base is similarly several feet in reach as well. What we're gonna be doing by simply deadheading means the process of removing the dead and spent roses. As you can see here behind these dried up petals, you can see the rose hips, which is where the seeds are stored. Let's try to open that up. We're gonna use our pruners here. And it's about halfway done fruiting in the sense of making the next generation seeds so it can perpetuate itself and the new varieties of roses through the process of cross-pollination. So the seeds are embedded in here. And like I said, they're only halfway developed. But what we're gonna be doing is removing all of the deadheads like so. And this is what most people do when they deadhead is they simply remove the flower and preserve and leave the leaves behind. And here we go again, deadheading, simply removing the spent flower and keeping the leaves behind. Let's do that one more time. Here we are, spent flowers and pruning, leaving the leaves behind. This practice will result in growth that is minimal and blooming that is even more pitiful. If you take a look up in the plant structure, you'll see, for example, over here, spent roses, and we can prune back to the leaf, and you can see that the plant is beginning to push out some new growth. But this growth is only gonna be in the inches, creating minimal growth and minimal blooms. But if you wanna encourage maximum growth with maximum blooms, I encourage that you cut back the new growth, which is, as you can see here, the last time I pruned was right here, which is about two to three months ago. And it pushed out all of this new growth, about 12 to 14 inches of new growth. And what I'm gonna do when I deadhead is cut back about one third of the new growth back. So we're gonna cut back to about this leaf here, and I'm gonna prune at an angle at about a quarter inch above that leaf node right there, and new growth will come out and then support maximum blooms off of this growing tip. And again, here we are. We've got spent roses, new rose coming in. As you can see, it's just pushing out about an inch of growth before it's trying to push out a new bloom. And again, we're gonna cut back a third of the way down. This process of pruning one third of the vegetative growth back is gonna encourage massive vegetative growth. And as I already said before, maximum blooms. Let's now finish this up. So in addition to pruning, it's also important to be feeding your roses throughout the year. The most important month of the year to organically feed your plants is May, but it's important to continuously feed them basically every three months through the entire year in addition to you can be foliar feeding your plants too. Again, for optimal maximum health, longevity, productivity, maximum blooms for your fruit trees, maximum fruit yield, size, quality, and taste. What we're gonna do now is basically add the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizer, which gives your plants all six plant macronutrients, which include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. We can feed them at the soil level by simply taking about a tablespoon or two, and we're just gonna sprinkle it here around the base of the plant like so. And then we can gently break those in to get it below the wood chips. And as soon as you water, the product's gonna begin working. 
in addition to feeding at the soil level, you can also make a liquid fertilizer. This four pound bag makes up to 120 gallons at a rate of a tablespoon per gallon of water. And this is a two gallon container. So we're gonna add two tablespoons. And now we're foliar feeding from the top while also enriching the soil below. So foliar feeding is a way to get a lot of the macronutrients and micronutrient nutrition into the plant right at the leaf level compared to being uptaken from the root. This is particularly important in the fall and winter months for your evergreen plants, such as for here, us in Southern California, our roses are green year round in addition to our citrus and avocados, mangoes, passion fruit, bananas, and so much more can all benefit from foliar feeding in the winter months to basically give them all of the nutrients they need for maximum productivity come spring so that they're not going in with depleted reserves within the plant. A couple university studies I wanna share with you before we conclude is Ohio State University says by late fall feeding, you can expect a better winter color, early spring greening up, increased shoot density, improved fall, winter and spring root growth and enhanced storage of energy reserves, which are your carbohydrates within, for example, your turf plantings. Oregon State University says macronutrients we should be applying regularly are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And again, Ivory Organics has all six plant macronutrients as explained by Oregon State University. The Oregon State University research goes on to say that by properly feeding your plants, it'll stimulate the natural defense mechanism of your trees, induce pest and disease tolerance, and to improve fruit yield and fruit quality. Additionally, field research has shown that supplementing foliar feeding can increase your fruit yields by between 15 to 25% compared with just conventional soil fertilization. However, foliar fertilization should not be considered a substitute for sound soil fertility programs. Well, I hope this lesson encourages all of you when pruning your roses and other plants around your property to properly prune them. I just did a lesson a few weeks ago, which talks about the importance of timing, major pruning, minor pruning, and summer pruning throughout the year. If you've enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give us that thumbs up, share us with your gardening friends and family. And for those of you that are new, be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay connected to all of our educational lessons as soon as they become made available. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. Keep on growing.